maybe they put my glasses. I already, I already lost one pair of, excuse me for turning around and dropping away, but I already lost one pair of glasses today. I don't know where I put them. They were in my truck on the way here, <laughs> and I couldn't find them. I would like to go to the 10th chapter of Romans. And, and the subject today what should it be? It could be on the evils of gambling, but it's not going to be. That's a little private joke, but I get it. You got it. Alright. At least. Today I'd like to talk about confession. And in this chapter, it says, we'll start in verse 1. I, I hate to just jump into the middle of something without the context. And we were talking the other night about various subjects that the church where I came from required in order to be saved. And we were questioning some of those concepts and, and the whole point was the answers for everything are in the Word of God. All the answers are there if you, and if you don't need to twist it. You don't need to extrapolate one verse of Scripture out of Deuteronomy chapter 22. And pull it out of its context and put it in to the book of Galatians. Jesus said, you don't patch up a new suit of clothes with an old patch or vice versa. You don't take a new garment, take a patch out of the new garment and patch up an old garment. Else the rent or the tear is made worse. You messed up two garments. You messed up the Old Testament and the New Testament. He said you don't take new wine and put it in old bottles. Old wine skin. You don't take the New Testament and try to put it in an Old Testament wine skin. Because the New Testament is fermenting. The New Testament is working. The Holy Ghost is working. And, and, and the law of the Old Testament will crack. The law couldn't save one person. That's why we're not under the law. Here it says, verse 1, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Can you say amen? amen? For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to what? Knowledge. Knowledge. A lot of people have a lot of zeal, but they don't know what they're doing. Hello. A lot of people have a lot of zeal. But their religion is based on their personal convictions and not on the Word of God. What they'd like to believe, what they'd like for the Word of God to say, so they have a concept first, and then they try to find every scripture that backs up their concept. Preachers do it all the time. They read the Word of God. A lot of times, you can easily read the Word of God for your next sermon. We're not supposed to be reading the Word of God so that we can have our next teaching. We're supposed to be reading the Word of God so we can align our lives to it. So we can change our lives with it. It's not just something to preach. Something to go to church and celebrate, which we do. Hallelujah. But it's something 
Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and do not the things that I say? Why would you do that? Call me Lord. I'm your Lord and I'm telling you something to do and you won't do it. Quiet. <laughs> All right. I bear the record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Islam has a zeal for God. Hello? I'm going to say this. Islam is antichrist. They make no bones about it. They will tell you they are against Christ. They are against the church that Christ has raised up in the earth. They are against the God of Israel. But the God of Israel is the God of the Bible. And came long before Islam was thought of by a false prophet. Well, that's not politically correct. I know it. <laughs> And what are we to do? <coughs> Love your enemies. Do good to them that persecute you. Do good to them that despise you. Opportunity of a Christian arises when persecution comes. There are Christians that are not allowed in Iran. For example, they've been arrested because they have a meeting going on in their house. And guess what? They're teaching Christ. And guess what? There are people that are interested and they're being converted to the Lord Jesus Christ from Islam. And Islam says, you're under arrest, you go to prison, and some of them have been executed already. Christians are being persecuted. So should we persecute? <coughs> should we hate? Now we have to pray. We have to depend on the Lord. And we have to love our enemies. And the best thing we can do is continue to preach Christ and to lead people to Christ. Jesus said, I am the way. Oh, I, I'm not going to leave the subject just yet. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he didn't stop there. He said, no man comes to the Father but by me. I'm going to say some things Praise the Lord. <laughs> and they are not politically correct. Praise yeah, the Lord. And All right. Marry the mother of Jesus not the way to God. <laughs> Wonderful though she is. The Pope is not the way to God. The Protestant church is not the way to God. The Catholic church is not the way to God. The Baptist church is not the way to God. The Presbyterian, the Pentecostals, the Apostolic, none of them are the way to God. This church is not the way to God. The way to God, Jesus said, I am the way. You don't have to come to this church to be saved. You don't have to go to any church to be saved. Jesus commanded the church to go to you. Mm, the devil doesn't like what I'm saying. I'm sure of that. And I don't say things like this too often. 
But there, you know, I asked the Lord the other day, why is it so hard? Why is it such a struggle in this world to be who we're supposed to be? Because there are two things, the revelation of God and the revelation of who you are. Who is God and who are you in Him? Why is it so hard? If love is so good, why is love so hard? If it's so wonderful, why is love so difficult? And the answer comes from the realm of the Spirit because it is difficult because you are living in a war zone. This world is a war zone. And this world has a God, a small g o d. The God, Satan, is the God of this world, and he has blinded their eyes, and he has done a good job of blinding the church's eyes as well. <laughs> if the church ever found out who they really are, and how much power and authority it we really have, and we rose up and took our place, not just in this building, in the church, so I got a ministry. So what? Are you using it? And where is it supposed to be used? Not just here. But in our home. In our house. Wouldn't be near as many divorces if they would practice the second commandment. Love your wife or your husband as you would have them to love you. Hello? First commandment is love God, right? Amen. You're always Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. Well, I got that part. Love God. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, all your strength. How many gods can you do that for? There is one God. Amen. Then he says, and the second commandment is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Then Jesus pushed the gas pedal down to the floorboard and said, I'm challenging you with a new commandment. I got a new commandment for you. I've got a new commandment for you. This one's new. I'm not telling you to love one another as you would have others to love you, that you would love them. He said, no, I'm telling you to love one another as I have loved you. Oh, wow. Doesn't matter how much you speak in tongues if you don't love. Doesn't matter how many people got healed from cancer. It's not going to matter if the lame walk. If we don't love one another, we're going to be jealous of one another. We're going to be fighting with one another. We just keep having church splits. Hallelujah. And what about the fact that other Christians don't agree with our doctrine? Shall we just disfellowship everybody that doesn't agree with us? What if we get disfellowshipped by the whole community of Pinckney because we don't believe certain things and they find that out? Love as Christ. Christ is on the cross saying, Father, forgive them. What? Forgive them. For they, they don't know what they're doing. They know not what they do. Hallelujah. Well, the, the biggest problem
problem that we're facing is right before us. How do I learn? I haven't, I haven't done this. The greatest challenge. I heard this at a Catholic wedding. It was my son Jonathan's wedding. And the Catholic priest got up and, and he read from John chapter 13 and he said, at the wedding, that we, they were to love each other as Christ has loved us. And he said, and it so profoundly struck me, he said, this is the greatest challenge that we have. And I've been repeating that and repeating that and repeating that and repeating that because Every time I think I see that Catholic priest standing in old St. Mary's Church and at my son's wedding saying, this is the greatest challenge we've ever been given, is to love one another as Christ loved us. As I have loved you, Jesus said, you to love me. Wow! I've never loved anybody quite that way, Lord. But he's commanding me. I mean, I was thinking I was doing pretty good when I asked God to forgive the people that disfellowshipped me from the church that I went to because I didn't pay my dues. And I dropped out of the organization and they had a little meeting and I was disfellowshipped or excommunicated as they say. And I was not invited to the meeting <laughs> to speak for myself and to tell them what I did believe. That was just one of the times I've been disfellowshipped. I've been disfellowshipped even in this church one time. Hello? I got a letter. No, you were disillusioned. <laughs>
to be a Christian. Nick Bain Christian. I am a Christian. We used to say, Nick Bain Soldier. I'm a soldier when I was in the army. But I'm a Christian. And my father, who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he tells me to love. That is the secret. The greatest of these is love, right? Faith, hope, love. The greatest of these is love. And he says, tongues will cease, prophecies will fail, knowledge will pass away, but love never fails. What is love? It's not sometimes smoochy and, and, and real sweet and, and all that. Agape is the word for love in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And agape means you don't always get what you want. <laughs> but you get what you need. That's agape love. So, even God didn't get what he wanted. Did he want man to fail in the Garden of Eden? Does he want man to go to hell, which is prepared for the devil and his angels, and not for man? God didn't get what he wanted. He gave us not what we wanted, we wanted pleasure. But he gave us what we needed. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You think he wanted to die on the cross? I don't think so. Well, I'm going to go back for the next few minutes, I'm going to change the subject back to the Bible again. <laughs> and go off on these tangents. Sometimes that's the main point. <clears throat> they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. i got to say this. Anything you think you can do to pay for your sins, you are mistaken. Penance can never pay for one sin. If it does, Jesus Christ's sacrifice was not good enough for the world. He paid for everything. And you cannot pay penance. You cannot buy indulgences. It's blasphemous to think that we can say, well, he paid for my mortal sins, but I have to pay for my venial sins. No, he paid for all sin. I am the way, the truth, the light. No man comes to the Father but by me. He didn't include anybody else in that program. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believeth. The law is over for everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the, the righteousness which is of the law that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead, up again from the dead. But what saith it? What does it say? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is the word of faith, which we preach. That if, if I say if, 
Yeah. yeah. That's pretty weak. Everybody say yeah. 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 A two letter word. Very important two letter word. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, yes. and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Confession. Word of faith. There was a young man on Thursday night that came to our class. And he was standing right there, and I was standing right here, and I said, Do you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior? Yes. I said, Are you saved? He went. Genesis, 
Abraham saying, hey, you promised me a son. I don't have a son. You promised me a son. I don't have a son. He said, look at the stars, man. Just look at the stars. If you can count the stars, your seed, your children are going to be like the stars or like the sand by the seashore. Innumerable. Abraham, believe God? Okay. I'm believing you. And God imputed it to him for righteousness. He actually believed that. Then God gave him a son. Then God says, take your son up to this mountain and, and sacrifice him on this mountain. The very son, he said, this is your one. This is the one. Abraham said, I believe God. Abraham takes his son. He he's, builds an altar. I just said, hey, Dad. <laughs> Where is the sacrifice? Dad says, uh, you're ready. I want you to lay down on that altar. I'm going to cut your throat. And offer you up to the Lord. Because Isaac was a beloved son acting out Jesus Christ. Isaac did invite us. Oh no, hey dad. Hey, you're 110, you know. I'm 17. <laughs> I just have to outrun you. <laughs> now, Isaac said, oh, that's the way it is, because he trained that boy. He taught that boy. This is the way it is. Isaac laid down his life. He didn't. He didn't just um, get <coughs> tackled and lie down. He, he laid down. He laid down. And he watched his dad pull the knife up. He's going to cut his throat. And the voice came to Abraham! Abraham! Hold off. Now I know. Now I know. The real faith will lead you to do everything. But the real faith, even though God knew before, and he imputed Abraham for righteousness, he knew in an experiential way the faith. It's when faith and works come together. Faith without works is dead. Yeah. If you don't get baptized in Jesus' name, if you don't get baptized, where's your faith? If you have the faith that God's talking about and you hear in the Word of God, you're going to do what the Word of God tells you to do. So, well, I don't know about the Holy Ghost I'm speaking in tongues stuff. I'll tell you what. If you have the kind of faith, faith says anything is possible. To him that believeth, all things are possible. Hallelujah! How much faith does it take to receive the Holy Ghost? About that much. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. And it will be it's like, well, have you moved any mountains? Yes, I have. You mean you've actually moved mountains? Yes, I've moved the mountains he's talking about. Behold, I give you authority over scorpions and over servants and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. We're going to finish up. For today, but we're talking confession at this point. You've got to confess it. You've got to say it. I am healed. Nathan spoke it today. Uh, that's why I know I'm on the right track. He stood right here and he said, I got prayed for on a Thursday night when all it was a bunch of dead heads. <laughs> Not really. Because faith has nothing to do with how you feel. Faith has nothing to do with how you feel. That's why people are so deceived. They think, oh boy, they get a blessing, they think, I got it. No, that was a blessing. 
You don't have it because you feel good. You have it because you believe it and you act on it. And if you have to keep acting on it, you keep confessing. And you keep confessing until, and you don't change that confession just because you feel like it isn't happening. Abraham felt like it wasn't happening. I'm not going to have a kid. Then when he had one, God tells him to take him up and sacrifice him. And the scripture says in Hebrews 11 that he re received him from the dead as though he received him from the dead. He knew that God could raise him back up to life again. That's the kind of faith. We're not talking about mental ascent. Oh, I believe the word of God is the word of God. The Bible is the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Or from generation to revolution. But I believe it all, every word. I just can't get it to work for me. And the reason you can't get it to work for you, I'm preaching to me too, see. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to me. I know I have to stick, I have to preach this stuff, I speak this stuff, and I know I'm going to get tested on it. And the husbandman shall be first partaker of the fruit. You're the first one to be tested. You're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. Your faith is going to be tried. Oh, join the Marine Corps. Ah, here's a rifle, here's a bayonet. See if you can put it together. Figure it out. <laughs> Just sit there, chill, three squares a day, don't worry about it. No, they're going to test you, buddy. They're going to test you. You said, can you tear this weapon down and put it back together? Can, can you crawl through the minefield? Crawl through the minefield when you get to the other side. Do you have any sand in your rifle? Well, here, George. Here's your rifle back. Boom! Right in the chest. You got sand in your rubber, you idiot. What good did it do you to crawl all through there? And now you can't fire this thing. You're going to be tested. Hello. Okay, we'll go to Matthew 11 and I'll shut up. However, if you talk to me after, we'll probably talk about the same thing. Hallelujah. Here he says, have faith in God, verse 22. 11, 22. Good way to remember. 11, 11, 22. Have faith in God. Amen? Amen. God bless us with you. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, everybody say, say. 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 Say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not, what? Doubt in his heart. Where? In your heart. Now my mind says, this is crazy. Does your mind ever tell you things that the Lord has told you to do? Well, let me chapter your mark. What is it? Oh, <laughs> what did I tell you? Matthew. 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 Translation okay. <laughs> You should know. You should be able to read my mind. You should be able to read my mind. Yeah, I got this thing too. All right. <laughs> You're going to be tested, I told you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, everybody say saith, say. shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Everybody say saith. Say That's old King James English, I know. 
There it is, on screen. <laughs> Notice! Whosoever shall say, and believes that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. It's been pointed out by a great faith teacher, Kenneth Hagin, that you have to say it three times as much as you believe it. Yeah. Now, Nathan gave us the illustration before the message today. He said, Pray for my shoulder. He claimed his healing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long that took, but he kept claiming his healing. I'm healed. I am healed. And today, he is here. Sometimes we say we've overcome something. But we quit saying, give us this day our daily bread. You got to do this every day. So, well, do I have to do it every day for the rest of my life? Yes, but you need to narrow it down to just today. Just today. The first thing I ever preached in this church was just for today. It was in Rudy's and Judy's recreation room. The first message to this church was just for today. I don't have to look for God tomorrow. But I do today. If there is a tomorrow, it's going to be the same. It's going to be one day. Give us this day our daily bread. He didn't say give us our bread. Just give us our bread. No. Daily bread. One of the problems is people just they don't keep up. So, well, I had a drink once and I'm thirsty again. And he said, if you drink, you won't be thirsty. Well, what he meant was, if you keep drinking, you won't be thirsty. If you eat of this bread, you won't hunger. If you keep eating of this bread. He said, well, I'm not inspired today to eat of this bread. The thing about the natural man, the natural man, he eats too much. Natural man can't stop him. Spiritual man, the natural man is so healthy, the spiritual man becomes weak. We need to reverse things. And then the natural man will become healthy because the spirit man is healthy. Vibrant. And who runs who? The idea is that your spirit man will dominate your flesh. Oh, you got that, right? We got that. We got that. Okay, so I'm going to let you go. Thank you for listening. Thank you for preaching. Actually, I wish this none of this would ever be on video. I, I, I looked at a few. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. I did not claim to be a great preacher, but I do claim the Word of God. Amen. And the power of the Word of God. Amen. Everyone in here needs to be repent. Hello. Amen. I thought you said this by faith. If you have faith, you will repent. Amen. Hello. I'm back to preaching again. <laughs> if you have faith, you will repent. Right. You believe God is real. He means it. Oh, when you repent, you're going to meet the Lord. 
And then the Lord's going to send you up into the wilderness and be tempted of the devil, I suppose. If you have faith, you will be baptized. It's like, oh, someday I'll be baptized. This is the only day you have. I have baptized people. One time I didn't have, I have clothes out in my truck to change into so to baptize people. I baptize people at 2 o'clock in the morning. Why? Because I believe, and, and I see in the Bible, where they were baptized after midnight, the same hour of the night. So what must they do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, now that you did that, we're going to go wake up their whole household at 1 o'clock in the morning, and they're all getting baptized. What? Why not wait till morning? This is urgent. That's why. Yeah. Work the whole family up. Get out of bed. You're getting baptized. What? What's that? <laughs> You're all going to get buried in some water tonight. Well, where are we going to get the water? I don't know. But you better find some enough to bury you. <laughs> And we were in Haiti, and they were going to have a baptism. So they got this plastic, dug a hole, got this plastic, put it in the, you know, and, and they're going to carry water up there in buckets to baptize them. Because I told them, you need to bury these people. Sprinkling isn't going to get the job done. We won't take somebody out to the graveyard and just put a shovel full of dirt on them. There. That's good enough. <laughs> I mean, dig a hole, man. <laughs> Put them all the way down and bury that person. Same thing in baptism. It means bury, dip, plunge. So, they all got baptized at about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. So, okay, that's good enough. Now you're ready to receive the Holy Ghost. So I went to a choir of fire. I lifted my hands. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you feel the quickening? Yeah. Well, when you feel that quickening, I want you to know you just let it come into you and fill you up. And when you get full, you can speak in other tongues, and you will. Hmm. Wow, I didn't hear that in my church. Well, the early New Testament church is what we're talking about. It has nothing to do with Pentecost. Though it happened on the day of Pentecost. It's not about the Pentecostal church. It's about the first century church. First century church doctrine. In a modern world. Who we stand? Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. I'm, I'm ready to pray. Uh, I think for anybody who would like to uh, come forward and before, and, and the Lord bless the food in the other room and the coffee, and, and we all want some of that. I do. Especially the coffee. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I, I'm, I'm ready to spend some, some time, if you like, to pray. If you want to receive the Holy Ghost, I tell you, you will receive the Holy Ghost, you will speak in other tongues, and it will happen today. Hallelujah. So, it's that easy? Yeah, he made it a gift. It's that easy. Hallelujah. Well, somebody dismisses in prayer. And I tell you something, too. We have a card for uh, Rose Cook, whose son, and this is Ed Burkmeyer's sister, her son was killed the other day in an accident, and the funeral was yesterday. But uh, there's a card, I'd like you to sign that card just to express, and we'll send her that card. Let, let the card be passed around. Um, and just to express from our church, it must be very difficult that she's gone through. She's lost Julie. 
two, about two years ago, was it? That's been less than a year ago, and now her son, I think he's 48 years old, and a uh, big accident, big explosion, and I can't think of a sweeter person than Rose, and uh, I would like for our church to just send her the card and and continue to pray for them. And uh, Brother Ed, we grieve with your family for it. And I appreciate all the prayers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're praying for you. We're praying for your family. Yeah. Amen. And and I would like to ask you to dismiss us and pray today. Father, we thank you for the message today and, and the love that we have for one another. Thank you, Lord. We know that the harvest is plentiful and the labors are few. And uh, we ask, Lord, that you would make disciples of us to help us yeah. to share your word, Lord. And for you did tell us of so the new commandment to love one another. And I have loved you. And by this, all people will know that you are my disciple. Yes. We ask that you would bless each and every person here. In Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, let's love one another. And if anybody would like to pray, then pray. All right, you got to put that thing out, right? How do we do this? Yeah. 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 Yeah.